Right. What about when you get a vulnerability or something like this log4j? How does that play into this whole automation scheme? Yeah. You, can, I mean, you can automate the controls, in, but it's hard to you, know, you can't automate the day zero stuff. And right. so, how do you how do you deal with that? Yeah, so I think it it proves two things. The log4 by the way, log4j is uh is is really a dead star attack. I don't know if people that are not, I mean, I'm sure that people that are in the space, they understand sort of the, like how bad it is, but it's sort of, you know, there's a lot of uh, articles now about this company NSO, you know, the Pegasus malware that you can remotely send a text to someone, boom, you take control of his phone, listen to everything. That's literally log4j right. for servers. That's how bad it is. And it's it's prevalent everywhere. Like I don't think there's a company in the world that doesn't have that's not exposed to that vulnerability. And literally, you need to send one command, and you're in, you're done. So it is a dead star attack. It doesn't happen very often, but every four or five years, there's a dead star attack. What this proves, though, to your question, is that one, this is a never-ending story. <laughs> like this is this is why cybersecurity is such a great uh, space to be in if you wanna have uh, job security. This is never ending, this is forever. And, and the more developers run faster, the more open source is out there, the more stuff get deployed so fast, you're gonna have more of that. So from a security perspective though, you wanna have two things. One, and, and we're not necessarily fully there, right? But you wanna have protections that are uh, preventative, but do not rely on pure signature world. Now we've been saying this on the antivirus world forever, right, for endpoints because you want to be able to protect against zero day attacks and stuff that you've never seen before, but it's really hard. So even today, I would say that in the application security space, like the web application firewall world, where this, uh, where, where you would expect to stop stuff like that, 99.99% of the solutions out there would not stop this on day one because they've never seen this before, right? By the way, checkpoint, our solution, our application security solution, back to your machine learning AI, actually stop this without knowing the attack, without knowing anything, because it's not looking for signatures. It actually has a patented technology that looks for attack indicators. Mm -hmm. Day one, we stop this attack and all its variants, which is really interesting. So, but generally speaking, you wanna have technology that doesn't rely on signatures to stop things because you know zero day is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is remediation. Let's assume that you're exposed and you're not stopping it. How do you automate uh, remediation? That is the biggest thing right now. Like, and, and that's where people are struggling. How do you go and patch? First, look at what's going through people's heads right now. It's a huge challenge. If I'm a big company, I'm Uber. I have tens of thousands of servers. My first question is, which servers have this vulnerability? Right. Then how do I update it? And now every time I update a piece of software, I need to do regression testing to make sure that the application doesn't go down, right? So the yep. first thing that comes into mind if you're a security person is say, okay, is there a compensating mechanism I can put? Like, so for example, can I stop this at the entrance? With like, for example, like a solution like I just talked about before from uh, our Cloud Guard application security solution. So I have time to patch things. Mm -hmm. So people need to have virtual patching in place, at least the ability to do virtual patching because patching 10,000 servers is gonna be really hard. And also look for solutions that really do not rely on uh, reactive mechanisms, or at least do not rely only on reactive mechanisms. I think that's where the future lies. It's been like that. We've been talking about this for 30 years. Right. Right? Yeah. Or 20 Control years. patching's been around for a decade over, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it's tough. In the application security world, it's really tough. It just shows you the 100 times problem, by the way. If you, sure. like 10 years ago, you would have 100 servers to deal mm -hmm. with. Okay, so you would send David and he would fix it. Today, yeah. You literally, someone clicked a button a year ago and you have 10,000 servers. Right. And then 50,000 functions and whatever. So it's a really tough situation. You have to think proactive. You have to think really beyond. You have to assume that you'll find something like that. Mm -hmm. And you need to have the mechanisms in place to do either virtual patching or protective, preventive mechanisms that do not rely on signatures. Right. And I guess the real difficult, it sounds easy enough, but a lot of these things are degrees of of an attack, looking like an attack. It takes time, maybe a series of events have to come together to actually confirm this is not good. Right, right. False it's positive is, is, the, is the biggest thing. So, I mean, you're touching on a very important topic. I think false, you know, this whole industry has been forever uh, sort of a compromise between how stringent you want to be versus okay. false positive and business, stopping business. 
Right. I think that the pendulum, by the way, shifted dramatically over the last five years, specifically in this world of cloud, because listen, let's be frank. Cloud just proved forever that the developer owns the world. Us right. security people, we're just, I mean, we're servants right now. The okay. developer owns the world. Amazon calls them builders, right? If you right. call them a developer, they'll be insulted. They're builders. Yes. They're not developers. They're the building. What are we, by the way, if they're building? We're, we're just we're the plumbers, like Christians, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're like, we're, and, and our best job, by the way, in order for us to do our job, I, I always say to people, the job of the security officer or the security administrator in 2022 is to stay out of the way. That's yeah, sort of his job description, right? Just stay I, out of my head. So how I, does that work with stopping, preventing, failing a deploy, the mm -hmm. sensitivity to false positives? We used to be able to say, hey, man, you can't do this. And I'm going to stop this because you, you remember the concept of fail open, fail close? Yep. There was a concept, hey, stop it. Today, no, man, you're not stopping anything. You're yep. alerting, like it's fail open. If, if you see a problem, let it in, call me, and I'll tell you if it's really a problem. So the accuracy for false, the sensitivity for false positives, stopping things became really, really high. So again, when you measure a technology, that's part, and, and I think for your customers or for people listening, that's another thing in the times 100 world, Mm -hmm. You have to measure business disruption as a key criteria for your security. It's not like a lot of the times I remember when I did my, when I did my company, we talked about it earlier. I remember one customer took our solution and it was a serverless security solution and he ran a normal pen test on it. Now mm -hmm. in a normal pen test, our stuff didn't stop things because they just cannot exist in a serverless world. He tried a normal type of attack pattern. He just used the normal pen test tool. And mm -hmm. I remember trying to explain to him that we do not stop things that we know are not attacks, even right. if we fail a pen test because they just can't happen. And uh, the idea was that we are way more uh, diligent around not stopping things we shouldn't be stopping because in the cloud world, the developer rules and he doesn't want to, to hear about problems that are not real problems. So part of the criteria has to be how accurate security is. It's not about if you catch a thousand things. It's about catching the right hundred. Right, yep. And it's a big, and it's a big topic. No, Node4j, by, uh, Log4j is the same problem. You can, mm -hmm. have, you can turn on a signature in your, web, in your traditional web application firewall. You'll just get a thousand uh, false positives. Right, and that kind of goes along. You mentioned, you know, the old world was uh, fail open, fail close. That was a firewall rule for 20 years now, right? What right. Do you do, right? Now you kind of got this, to the application level more like the zero trust network architecture how do you instead of trust but verify now verify then trust you right, know, right right kind of flip-flopping but that's harder to do when you start coming to things like the cloud where you're the front end trying to protect the front end of the world server world or a website to the whole right. world it's much more difficult to it's way different, more course difficult. yeah i do think i do think though you touched on zero trust i do think that uh to a large extent the concept of zero trust. Zero trust, by the way, is a term that got totally abused over the right. last few yeah. years. Everything is zero trust. But right. if I want to say to my kids that they're behaving, I'll tell them, hey, man, you're such a zero trust kid. Like, you're amazing. You're zero trust. Everything is zero trust. But in reality, I think that the concept of list privilege, which is really, you and I have been around for, a while, for more than yeah. a minute, zero trust is just a cool term for list privilege. Man, sure. I'm just going to give you exactly what you need, or at least the minimum that you need to do your job. Whatever you are, you're a user, you're a machine, you're whatever. And mm -hmm. I think that concept, and by the way, and again, in my company, originally, that's where we put a lot of effort, is uh, you want to be able to say, you want to be able to allow to come to the uh, machine or the entity or the user to do just what they, just what they need. That's mm -hmm. really the concept of zero trust, least, least privilege. So I think if you go back to the 100 times 100 problem, yep. that's really the most effective way. Theoretically, if you know the minimum that you need, I'm yeah. just going to give it to you. And if I can be really accurate with it, which is where the problem is, right? Usually, yeah, yeah, I can be really accurate with it and adapt with time. That is the most secure thing. So if an application, if a container inside an application only needs to talk with the data, there's only one microservice that needs to talk with the database. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, you should allow only that microservice to talk with the database, mm -hmm. period. Right. right now, if you can, the problem is again in the times hundred. How the hell do you do that? Right. Who's going to sit there and configure which microservice needs access to the database where the developer just changed the application yesterday? Right. If there's no, or now he's changing it again and again 
and again and again. So yes. you have to automate. It goes back to automation. So this privilege or zero trust is worth nothing in the cloud world without automation. Mm -hmm. I've seen solutions over the last five years they show you these great maps of your application and they map the application and then they tell you, hey, sit down and write, like, think about it, like firewall rules. Right. Source the thing. Dude, there's no <laughs> way. You've right. seen the, you, know, you all know, you've seen the Netflix map for microservices. You know that famous picture that there's like, I can't remember now, but a billion nodes can interconnect. Who's going to sit down and configure machine A1000 and can talk with right. this one, can this, can talk with this, and tomorrow they can talk with others. So again, automation, uh, zero trust. It's a factorial is, problem, right? It's a thousand factorial. The, the yes. numbers are just crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You, you put a map today. I remember the good old days. You remember the good old days. We yeah. had a map of our network oh. architecture on the wall. Yeah. You just imagine how this thing looks like today. Yeah. It's insane. It's insane. Right. And what, what, what would you do with this map? You need these uh, frames, you know, like the picture frames that change automatically right. because it changes every five seconds. Right, continuously so, discovering, yeah. Yeah, so it's all about, again, it comes back to automation, yeah, at the end of the day.